good evening so i'll be talking about a science experiment kit that is an open hardware and open source software thing and it is from inter university accelerator center that's a particular accelerator laboratory so we have done this for mainly for the benefit of science and engineering students basically this is the motivation for the project like it's in the indian context our science education normally there is a lot of theory and a little bit of or uh, very little experiments and it doesn't move further much i mean it's chances are there it goes in circles and it also reflects ultimately when even in the computer field if you see more people are comfortable with the desktop rather than a embedded system or a microcontroller because there you have to do something or maybe use a soldering in or something like that so these are probably some of the reasons why we ignore experiments in our science education and one reason is actually last of lack of cost effective equipment and that is what we try to address in this project so i'll be talking about expice actually it stands for experiments for young engineers and scientists and this exp is appended just for the sake of you know search engines otherwise if you give this as an acronym it's, it's very hard to search for it and this is a small device here it is it's here that you connect to the usb port and convert the pc into a science laboratory it looks like this it, it works on any pc having a usb port and it was tested on this akash computer and also raspberry pi so it's, it needs very little processing power so if you ask what is it it's a low cost device that can measure and generate voltages and you can plot graphs using that almost in real time so that the idea is to encourage learning by exploring like when you talk about this teaching about electricity ac and dc all those things just try to measure it see how it looks graphically and try to learn it and it already has experiments developed and documented starting from high school level to pg level that depends on how much analysis you do with the data and for electronics hobbies it will act as a test equipment like a oscilloscope frequency generator and all those things are built into that and everything done with open software and hardware so this is how it looks okay this just to know the size it's something like a visiting card size box 12 bit analog input output is there and digital input output and very accurate time interval measurements are there and it is usb powered but at the same time it supports like inputs in the bipolar like plus minus 5 volt inputs it will take and this is one simple example like here the unit is working as a four channel digital storage oscilloscope and only drawback is it's in the low frequency region because the sampling rate only 250 kilo samples per second that is quite low when you compare to a real oscilloscope but the resolution is better than a real oscilloscope it's a 12 bit resolution and these are some of the so examples i'll give you this one and suppose say if somebody is studying logic gates you put the chip here and connect and this will feed the input and take the output so you can see the graphs coming say logic gate we have two inputs and the output will be like this for an and gate and for an or gate it will be like this so this is just very easy to do and you don't need anything other than the box because it provides the power also this is another one from the physics side like if you study interference of sound the beats sound beats there are two sources you can set this both of the frequency of these piezo systems and then capture there's a microphone built in here and the output is given to an input channel and you're watching it so one can just analyze it and do a fourier transform and see the individual frequencies and all this another one from electronics like if you want to plot the transistor characteristic you connect the transistor here 
and it plots the graph. Of course, I just trying to put some different ones in from different area. This is something totally different, not from electronics or electrical circuit. Here, what you have is there is a small metal ball is hanging here by using an electromagnet and under software control you can just release this, it will drop down and hit here and that will induce a signal on this loudspeaker, it acts as a sensor and you can measure this time of flight within I mean with an accuracy better than a millisecond. So, just from this time of flight one can calculate the acceleration due to gravity, it is a very simple experiment. And many more you can just see the website around 50 are done documented and uh, since it is python programmable one can develop more experiments, so a large number of them already there. And this is something probably may interest some of the software people or you know doing some microcontroller programming, this is the design like what is done is the microcontroller is good at real time measurements capturing waveform, but if you want to plot something and this is not the tool for it. So, the job is divided like this you have PC sitting here and running and programs are written in python and all the real time jobs are done here like you connect your sensor control elements outside world elements here and there are other analog circuits and this microcontroller does the actual job and it transfers the data here and the plotting is done and there is a it's this and everything is done in python or you can do it in c as well the library is there so you can see here this small program first two lines are just importing the library and creating an object and the third one is the matplotlib library is imported and this one line captures say 300 samples 100 microsecond between two samples and it just plots it. So, this is the output. So, this is how you can code it in python. So, if someone wants to set up a new experiment to study something, he can easily write his own program, he does not have to depend on whatever the GUI provided. So, in a nutshell what it means to different people is for students it is something like an affordable tool for doing experiments anywhere anytime that you are not tied up to your lab timings you can do it at home and for teachers they can supplement their teaching theory by with the demonstration and also use it for doing experiments or develop new experiments and for an engineer it is a sort of system where all these things are put together like physics and electronics, bit of microcontroller programming, interfacing techniques and scientific computation and GUI. So, all these things are there not not much, but everything is there and see how all these things can be integrated to create a new something some useful product and of course, the hobbyist being myself one it is not ignored. So, you have a tool where you can get it very cheap and it is there is a lot of scope for improvement and you can spend time on it and this is a bit of the history of this project we started somewhere in 2005 it is called the phoenix project that was physics with homemade equipment and innovative experiments and the, that time the parallel port was there. So, we had a big box and it was controlled by a Linux device driver and code was written in C and after a while it became another say 6 inch by 5 inch small box with a microcontroller inside and it had the RS232 option as well as later on USB and it shifted to Python at this point and this was there running for 3 4 years then last year another one was made the improvement was mainly the resolution we put 12 bit adcs dacs and everything and it's totally usb powered there is no separate power supply required and this is another enhanced version of it half the size it's a very small one and slightly better in terms of sampling rate and all And this was just again how it evolved. We started it, but there are many people who contributed to that. And this is one person from Oth. He came up with the idea of changing from C to Python, 
and that helped the project a lot and we are now doing mostly in Python. This was some article he wrote long back, just writing these five lines and doing that time of flight experiment. That is the first Python program written for this piece of equipment, that old big box. And see making this box cheaper, the box is already very low cost. It is available for less than 2000 rupees, people are selling it. And then we wanted a computer also, something you know cheaper because the option is a netbook that itself costs here something like 12, 13,000. So, we are exploring other options and Raspberry Pi was one option and tested and with after some initial problems, now it works perfectly fine with Raspberry Pi, it was reported on, on their site also. And then recently, I mean here it is outside that we have given the demo, it now is working with the Akash. So, once this combination will cost only something like 3000 rupees to have a standalone lab, I mean including the cost of the computer. So, that will be probably the way to go for schools and all. And the present status is something like so far some more than 1000 use pieces are there in circulation and some university they have put in the syllabus, physics syllabus. And our institute occasionally, I mean, train physics teachers how to use it and also how to program in Python and how to install Loon Linux and all those things. That occasionally we conduct training programs. And this is another person who contributes. He is school teacher and a Debian developer from France. And he also once acquired a lot of earlier version of this box and used in the school and uh, several people are using it. In Europe, I mean this uh, earlier version of XPy is around 100 pieces were sold, I mean last year and hackable devices were selling it too. And this is something like, you know, this is just a sort of aim, we do not know how it will work out. Like if you see a multi digital multimeter in the market, you can get it here for something like less than 100 rupees. And if you see the amount of material, it is more or less same, but this cost at the moment 30 dollars mainly because this is made only in hundreds of pieces, not in tens of thousands or in millions. So, once suppose if it takes off very well, it is possible we can probably come down to very low cost and at the same time probably we can compare with the other offerings. Like this sort of experiment what it does, the other devices are mainly from Pasco, Fiwe and Vernier and all and they start something like for 500 dollars and uh, not flexible enough because they are all closed systems, you do not get the source code or you cannot modify the things. So, that way this is much, much better. And now things about the availability, software of course, you can download it, it is all open source, it is kept on the XPyze website. But hardware what we have done is institute has decided okay we leave it open including schematic all the details and also the permission is given to manufacture it royalty free. So, we have a couple of people manufacturing it and there are several people who are at the moment selling it and this is from Europe right? and this is again in Bangalore only this one and that person actually has come up here is around he is participating in this and the software at the moment we with the kit a live CD is given that is the Ubuntu modified to include all the software that is the easiest way just boot from the live CD and start using it and other options it is already it is a part of Debian I mean previous version and maybe within 6 months this also will be part of Ubuntu repository and of course the Python source files are it runs on MS Windows also since it is just source code. Well, this is how it is packaged, the interface and a little bit of accessories that mostly all these things are available because of con consumer electronics items are very cheap nowadays and it is packaged in a box like this, like something like this it is packaged and that is how it is available. And this is the XPyze website, 
and here you will find all the information. This is the earlier version, this is the present one which I just mentioned. And there is one more website set up by somebody that is an XPRIZE blog site. So, what I will do is I will just probably connect it and start it. So, now you are just seeing a sinusoidal wave, I have just connected the wire to put it there and if I remove the connection it will go away and if I just hold it in my hand then also you will see some signal, it is there a little bit of pick up you will notice and that can be analyzed, if I just put it here. You can see the frequency here. It should show something like 50 hertz. I don't know how much it is showing. So it's quite noisy. The pickup is quite noisy here. So you have just use the built-in sine wave generator, and that is something like I don't know, around 150. It should be. And if I want to see, like I just, I will just give only one example, I have a diode here, that means half of the waveform should be cut with a rectifier diode. So, just connect a diode from here to another, the second channel. And see what comes out after the diode. is not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, I will just take the second channel and give it second another source connect it here. You can see one half is missing after the diode and of course, it is looking very ugly. There is no current flowing. I will just put a little bit of load and now you see the reality and it also clearly shows this difference whatever is the voltage drop across the diode that 0 0.7 volt of the silicon diode and this is how you can explore things. Now, instead of diode suppose I remove a diode and put a capacitor and what is expected is some phase shift and you can very accurately measure that phase shift. So, I will take a 1 microfarad capacitor and connect that instead of that diode. You can see this is our input waveform and this is the output and if you want to see that all the numbers quantitatively you just start another window. Here you have all the numbers here. So, this is the measured phase shift and the phase diagram and you can see here and it clearly shows that what because the textbook says when you have a capacitive circuit the voltage and the current is leading the voltage. So, the red is the current waveform and the blue is the voltage. You can easily see that when this is at 0, this is already at, at the peak. So, that is a 90 degree phase advance. So, this is what is the intention because science and engineering students should be able to do things at home if they have a computer rather than depending on you know the science laboratory in the school. And only thing we have done is just try to make something which is cost effective to do the work. Thank you. If there are any questions, help. So, what would it take to increase the frequencies? So, you said 2.5 kilohertz you have? For me, sampling frequency? Yeah. That is 250 kilohertz only, 250 kilohertz. Oh. Because it is a yeah. big yeah, yeah. So, what would it take to increase this? No, it, so, 
from the hardware to what could you Okay, do? see if this uh, if you want to see what is done is inside there is a 16 bit microcontroller, a PIC microcontroller and if you want to go for higher frequency then one may have one has to do with an FPGA or some design and but then what happens is here we have focused on the resolution because this has a 12 bit resolution. So, we want if rather than frequency because most of the time these studies are done at audio frequency range and if you try to increase the frequency obviously we will lose the resolution because even the commercial oscilloscope which claim this all these giga samples per second they are all 8 bit or less but this is 12 bits. So, that we will lose and the cost also now if you look at this the component cost may be less than 10 dollars inside the box. Yeah, no, so I, I was just hoping that perhaps the next generation of the chips can do more, can actually get the higher frequency. Possible.